If you look at the TPM, FPKM, RPKM data in a scatter plot, you can't tell where the noise range is. However, if you look at the same data in count, you can see it. Notice that the genes of noise are spread diagonally in the TPM, FPKM, RPKM data. Subio platform offers a preset scenario for TPM, FPKM, RPKM data. The default settings should be adjusted as you look at the data. In this data, a lower limit of 0.1 would be acceptable, since a noise rate below 0.1 is considered to be high. Press the Do Normalize button to overwrite the processed signal to reflect the modification. As we saw earlier, this data seems to be less reliable when the TPM is lower than 0.1. So I'll use the filter tool to collect genes with TPMs lower than 0.1. The target genes are with TPM less than 0.1 at either one of duplicates in all groups. Check the filter passing genes in the viewer. Exclude them and make the QC1 list. If you also have count data, you would be able to remove noise more effectively. Since the threshold is different between TPM and count, adjust it for count data. You see that you can remove more genes having unreliable measurement values. If counts are not available, you must be aware that the analysis results are more affected by noise. Next, you are going to remove genes whose expression levels don't vary by experiment. Collect the genes whose average processed signal values fall within the range of minus 1 to 1 for all groups. The width of the threshold seems to be too broad, so adjust them. It seems that such a threshold is appropriate to assume that the expression does not fluctuate. Exclude these genes to make the QC2 list. From this QC2 list, we extract the genes whose expression is altered by CE1 treatment compared to CC. Use the Compare Two Groups tool. Adjust the criteria as viewing the volcano plot. Since it was extracted from the QC2 list, create a folder named derived from QC2 and save it in it. Next, we can extract the genes whose expression is altered in CE2, which we will omit here. The CE1 treatment has extracted genes whose expression is up and down, but this method misses something. So, we're going to apply new filterings against all measurements, instead of the QC2 list. If you filter TPM less than 0.01 at CC, you can include genes with no value in the CC. This is considered as a gene list whose expression was not detected at CC. Similarly, make a list of genes whose expression was not detected at CE1.
Next, we will collect genes with TPMs greater than 10 at CC. Adjusting for thresholds, we make a list of genes that are likely to be expressed at CC. Similarly, make a list of genes that are likely to be expressed at CE1. Now that we have four lists, we can combine them with the Venn diagram tool. Make a list of genes at the intersection of not expressed at CC and expressed at CE1. Now, combine the list of expressed at CC and not expressed at CE1. Now, combine the list of expressed at CC and not expressed at CE1. Save the list of the intersection. These are also candidates for genes with differential expression, but you missed by filtering fold change or p-values. Therefore, by merging a list made with fold change and p-values and a list of genes with, without measurement values. To get the final list of genes with differential expression. Similarly, get the file list of down-regulated genes. By the way, if you apply clustering with the QC2 on this processed signals, you see that the resulting heat map lacks some parts. What is missing is the absence of TPM value. Now, go back to the Setup Series tab, go to the Normalization setting. Add a block of fill missing values at the end. The value to be filled should be between 0 and minus 1. Press the Do Normalize button to confirm and overwrite the processed signals. Redo the clustering on the new processed signal. This eliminates the missing parts in the heat map that you saw before. Please note, however, that you should not redo the expression difference analysis on this processed signals.